You cannot fail. Let them Let him, not the boy. failed you, son. Forgive me. Forgive me. I will let you down no longer. Forgive me. Forgive me. What are you doing? <sighs> Trade your family. Le fool, le cloy, gion me mehucha. Gabuje and Prish Gabimirish. You're too late! You will not get him! It'll work. It must. David, it was with great joy that I received your last letter. Know that you are missed terribly here in India. If my calculations are correct and the International Postal Service is kind, this letter will keep you company as you make the final leg of your journey to Scotland. I hesitate to say anything for fear you'll think me foolish, even hysterical. Your father made it his life's work to research his family's twisted history. This and his obsession with the occult combined to unravel his poor mind. John loved his family and his family home, but he hated and mistrusted them in equal measure. Son, beware of the Gordons. Blood is not always thicker than water. Your loving mother.
note about a library, a key, uh, and, and some sort of broken toy. Should I even try to read any real meaning into all of this? A note about a library, a key, uh, and, and some sort of broken toy. Should I even try to read any real meaning into all of this? We have arrived, sir. Welcome, Mr. Gordon. I'm Andrew Harrison. Mr. Harrison, it's good to finally meet you. From our correspondence, I expected you to be older. Ah, uh, thank you. I lead the way. It's quite dark already. We can continue to talk inside. arrived finally. David, welcome to Skahandu House. Lady Margaret, how kind of you to welcome me in person at such a late hour. An impressive building. Skahandu, though. Unusual. What, what is its meaning? Unusual only if you have not bothered to study Gaelic. It means Black Mirror House. Many generations of the Gordon family have been master of this house. It is a great responsibility. Perhaps the greatest a man could bear. If I may, I would like to know more about my father's last days. <laughs> it is too late in the day for such morbid talk. You do look so very much like John, though. Angus, please show Master David to his room. Yes, ma'am. I trust you had a pleasant journey. This place is rather remote, even for Scotland. It was most pleasing, thank you. I was fortunate enough to stop off in several fascinating places on my way here. How long have you been practicing law? I came to the bar a few years ago. I'm at Chambers in Edinburgh with lawyers who have served the Gordon family for generations. I'm embarrassed to ask, but it is my job. Have you proof of who you say you are? You are David Gordon, son of the late John Gordon. Please, I quite understand. Here you are. Hmm. Hmm. What a curious object. Isn't it? It belonged to my father. He posted it to me shortly before his death. I'm not at all sure what it is. Perhaps it's something else returning home where it belongs. Like its new owner. Have a good night, Master David. I shall continue my studies.
Please follow me, Master David. Your grandfather, his lordship Edward Gordon. There is no denying it. We are family. Somebody still cares. Maybe you weren't as bad as mother believed. Grandfather Edward. Father never spoke of you, but mother never had a kind word to say. You were the worst of the lot, she said. Uh, this way, sir. Does that sometimes, sir? Lady Gordon expects you for breakfast at eight, sir. Thank you. Lady Gordon called you Angus? Uh, pleased to meet you, Angus. Yes, sir. She did. I am Mr. McKinnon. Uh, Mr. McKinnon? Yes. Um, I'd advise you not to leave the room tonight. Ticking clocks are not the worst thing you may encounter in the house at night, if you don't know your way around. Sleep well, sir. Maybe he's more of a morning person. I doubt this place could ever be properly warm. Hold on. This looks like... Wait a moment. This is a piece of a model. I got somewhat turned around following Angus through the house. Sorry, Mr. McKinnon, but I think my room is probably around here somewhere. This room has to be next to mine. Is this what Father was trying to tell me with the trinket he sent me? This room has to be next to mine. Is this what Father was trying to tell me with the trinket he sent me? Everything I ever owned could fit in there, five times over. Glad I don't have to carry you around anymore. Mr. McKinnon lifted you up with ease. Hmm, not many matches left. Without some obscure local law that required me being here in person, I would probably never have come. <laughs> A pigeon amongst the cats. Sorry to inform you of death of John Gordon. Stop. 
Please return to Skahundu House. Stop. Andrew Harrison, lawyer. Stop. I should get a new passport. This one's filling up. This handsome, cheery, sober man is not the one I remember from my childhood. Pieces of some kind of drawing. How odd. The candle is nearly gone, but it should do for a while once lit. Ah, just what I need. In an old house like this one, Sooner or later, no drawer stays empty. Put your high praise of Scottish water to the test, Father. Later. More pieces of the same drawing. Maybe I can make out what it shows if I had enough of them. We meet again, old foe. Waiter, big enough to fit your own weight and in food into. No, this isn't right. There should be a room here. No, this isn't what I need either. Where is it? Did you say something? Uh, it's nothing. Research can be a frustrating business. Ghosts, legends, ancient history. Where's the rest of them? The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. I started reading this, though never got round to finishing it. The gentle maid whose hapless tale these melancholy pages speak. Say, gracious lady, shall she fail? 
to draw the tear adown from thy cheek. Hmm. Despair, by a man called Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Ghastly shades of bygone gladness, clawing fiends of future sadness, mingle in a cloud of madness ever on the soul to lie. Thus the living, lone and sobbing, in the throes of anguish throbbing, with the loathsome furies robbing night and noon of peace and rest. But beyond the groans and grating of abhorrent life is waiting sweet oblivion culminating all the years of fruitless quest. The words of a troubled soul. Is this what father meant by a family of snakes? Wouldn't it be more comfortable working here? Uh, that's Lady Gordon's private desk. It would be improper for me to use it. Selected Poems by Edgar Allan Poe Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet, if hope has flown away in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. A dream within a dream. Barging into someone's bedroom in the middle of the night is not how to earn their trust. I can see the family resemblance. This one died very young. Ooh. And this one. None of them seem to have made it past middle age. <sighs> Exquisite craftsmanship. I doubt our family could afford a marvel such as this nowadays. Locked. I used to regale my Indian school friends with tales of knights in shining armor. An earring. 
I doubt it was buried in the ashes on purpose. Someone must have lost it. The cold doesn't seem to affect the residents of this house. All the fires are fighting and losing battle against the draft. Contrary to everything I've learned so far about Grandfather Edward, Lady Margaret still worships him. Just how old is the Gordon clan? For all I know, it could stretch back to Roman times or even further. Somewhere out there they found father, or rather what was left of him. What a cruel way to take your own life. On the morrow, I will explore the grounds, as soon as the sun is up. It's too dark outside to speculate about the size of the estate. Who would tear up photographs? given the painstaking process surrounding their creation. Father must have left something for me in the master's study. I suppose I could ask Mr. McKinnon to open it for me in the morning, but I'll have him breathing down my neck. And who knows what I'm to find. Father must have left... My faithful friend, Insomnia. I wonder if Andrew has left the library yet. Shame. Attics often speak volumes about the owners of a house.
must be hard to keep this place clean. That looks daunting. Daunting, but rewarding and fascinating. Fascinating? Yes, indeed. The history of the Gordon family goes back a long way. So it's true we are one of the oldest families in Scotland. Oh, much more than that. The Gordons have owned this land back into antiquity, before records were even kept. Add to that some unique and unusual local laws. Well, it can be a challenge, but a welcome one. Did you know my father? I was called to the house shortly after your father arrived. Why did that need a lawyer? Those complex local laws I spoke of were to blame. Your father left when Edward died, so none of the required legal formalities to transfer the house were observed. Does that mean...? Not at all. Uh, there will be no issue with transferring the estate to your name, if that is what you wish. Uh, have you had a chance to examine my papers? I have, and am delighted to say that everything is in order. I would not be doing my job if I didn't warn you that with Edward dead and your father absent, the family fortune has somewhat diminished over the years. However, the real treasure is the castle and the grounds themselves. I haven't spent as much time as I'd like here, but it is a unique place. Well, it's been a long day. I bid you good night. I'll get myself something to read and then head to bed too. Good night. Hiding something, are we? Locked.
I'm no expert on fashion, but this looks like a rather old-fashioned design. A parting gift from Mother. To light my way in the darkness, she said. A note about a library. A key and, and some sort of broken toy. Should I even try to read any real meaning into all of this? You are? I'm the one who keeps the house from being covered in weeds. Name's Rory. Pleased to meet you. Uh, I'm David Gordon. Aye. Pretend you were coming today. Did you know my father? I did. Aye. Shameful what they did to him. What do you mean? H who is they? Hmm. Why are you sitting in the dark? There's enough light for me, laddie. Oh, your eyes. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I see more than most do, son. How long have you worked for the Gordons? Always been a gardener, and I do some fishing. The luck's a bonny place, calms the nerves. 
I'll leave you to your supper then. Being a Gordon can be a curse, laddie. Your father kenned the hard way. Mind you dinner follow in his footsteps. Blood. Not human, I presume. Better safe than sorry. This might come in handy. Every thief's best friend. <laughs> I know a few Fakir's tricks I can use this for. The seller can wait till tomorrow. Rory just disappeared into the darkness. Oh, locked. Oh, locked. Hmm, this might take a while. I need to be steady and try to... Oh, well, well there you go. That's not the right combination. Dear Lady Gordon, I write to you with the utmost urgency. I am seeking information about my patient, your son, John Gordon. During our conversations, he makes allusions to his relationship with his father, but will not expand when pressed. You have failed to respond to my previous request, so I am writing again to insist in the strongest terms possible that you furnish me with the required answers. Your son's recovery depends on it. Yours faithfully, Dr. Leah Faber.
Bethlehem Hospital, London. Father knew how to open the cabinet.